So let's consider again an aircraft in steady level flight. And we've seen this before, but let's write the equations again. Lift is equal to weight, drag equal to thrust. The power P is simply the thrust times the flight velocity. Thrust equal drag. And we can multiply and divide by L, just so that the ratio of lift over drag appears. And let's now use the fact that lift is equal to weight. And I'll write it in terms of coefficients rather than forces. So this is the power required for steady level flight. But we need an expression for V infinity. So let's use again the fact that lift is equal to the weight and write the lift force using the lift coefficient. From this we can get an expression for the flight velocity, v infinity. Now let's plug v infinity back into our power expression. And let's put everything inside the same square root. Let's clean it up a little bit. And this is the expression we were looking for. It tells us that power depends on the ratio of lift to the three halves and drag. Now, why is this important? Well, because if we want to minimize power, it turns out you need to man maximize this quantity, Cl to the free half divided by Cd. So let me just put that back here. So I can clean up a little bit. Now to the second question. What's the relationship between induced drag and drag at zero lift for minimum power? So let's go back to our expression for the power here. The first part under the square root is a constant. It's the weight of the aircraft, the density, which depends only on the altitude at which you're flying, and the reference surface area, for instance, the wing area. Now what varies is the second part. And minimum power is achieved when Cl to the three halves divided by Cd is maximum. So we need to find the condition under which the derivative of this quantity is zero. And let's do that on a separate page. Start with the assumption of a parabolic drag coefficient. And therefore write Cl to the three halves over Cd as... And we'll be taking the derivative of this with respect to the lift coefficient. If you're comfortable with the math, feel free to skip some of this, but I'll go into the details for those who need it. This is the derivative of a quotient. So the derivative of u over v is the derivative of u, u prime, times v, minus u times the derivative of v, divided by v square. So in our case, u is equal to Cl to the three halves, and v is equal to to the drag coefficient. And remember, we're taking derivatives with respect to Cl. So another formula you need to know, the derivative of u to alpha power is alpha u to the power alpha minus one. So u prime is three halves times Cl to the three halves minus one, so to the one half. And v, prime, cd0 is independent of lift, it's a drag at zero lift, so we have simply, so I'm going to go and plug that back to write that the derivative of cl to the three halves over cd with respect to cl is equal to, so u prime times v, minus u v prime. 
and all that divided by v square. Now that means that for the derivative to be zero, the denominator needs to be zero. Now let's simplify this a little bit by multiplying both sides by two thirds and divide by CL to the one half. And of course you recognize this quantity here to be the induced drag coefficient. So the power is minimum when the drag at zero lift is one third of the induced drag. So let's go back to the previous page and rewrite the parabolic drag coefficient assumption just for reference. So we now know that for minimum power, CD0 is one third of CDI. And then the drag coefficient is one third of CDI plus CDI. That adds up to four thirds of CDI. at minimum power. So we can write that the minimum power is equal to that same part under the square root. I replace CD by my newly found expression and simplify. So we see that the minimum power does not depend on drag, but does depend on the square root of CL. And also, you might want to note that there's a relatively strong dependence on the weight, weight to the three halves, and inversely proportional relation to the square root of the surface area. Let me mention a few extra things. So first let me bring back the expression for the flight velocity and write it this way. So the flight velocity depends on the ratio of weight to wing surface area. This is called the wing loading and it's an important parameter in aircraft design. Now we also see that V is inversely proportional to the square root of the density, meaning that when you're flying at higher altitudes where rho is lower, you need to fly at a higher speed because you need to generate enough lift to compensate for the weight. Now let me also write the minimum power in another way. And here I want to point out two things again. One, is that you see again the dependence on the square root of the wing loading. And the second point is the strong dependence of power required on weight. So if there's one single thing that you can do when you design an aircraft to reduce the power is reduce the weight. Something else you can do is increase the aspect ratio. And this is something that we'll be seeing again. High aspect ratio wings are aerodynamically more efficient.